BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. The ancient Hebrew scriptures foretold of the Anointed One, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His Word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples. And after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. Vamos en búsqueda de una bendición y abran sus Biblias en la carta a los Efesios capítulo 3. Ephesians uh, chapter 3. Ef carta a los Efesios capítulo 3. Uh, this is uh, the Citygate Messianic Bible Study part number Ephesians part 16. Este es el estudio mesiánico de los portones de la ciudad. El, el estudio bíblico mesiánico portones de la ciudad y estamos en la sección número 16 del libro de, G, de Efesios. And we're on slide 190. Y estamos en la diapositiva número 190. Slide 190. Eh, eh, diapositiva 190. We're in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 through 19. We're just backing up a little bit. Estamos en la carta a los Efesios capítulo 3 versículo 16 al 19. Okay, I pray that from the treasures of his glory he the Father will empower you with inner strength by his spirit so that the Messiah may live in your hearts through your trusting. Also I pray that you will be rooted and founded in love so that you with all God's people will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, height and depth of Messiah's love. Yes, to know it, even though it is beyond all knowing, so that you'll be filled with all fullness of God. Okay, we're focusing on verse 17 to start this study off again. Nos, es, nos vamos a enfocar en el versículo 17 para comenzar este estudio. Okay, verse 17, so that the Messiah may, be, may live in your hearts Vers through your trusting. Also, I pray that you will be rooted and founded in love. So we're looking at rooted, Estamos viendo la palabra arraigado. It is G4492. Es la palabra griega G4492. It means to cause to strike root. Se, eh, significa causar eh, eh, que crece, eh, que... Eh, um, what is striking? What for striking? Pegarle a la raíz. Uh, strengthen with roots. Eh, um, fortalecido en las raíces uh, to fix arreglar establish establecer to be thoroughly grounded es, eh, ser totalmente eh, sembrado ok the, the, this establecido this understanding is very important to to look at este eh, entendimiento es muy importante el observarlo because this is a Remember, it's a baby congregation that he's talking to. Porque recordemos que él está hablando una congregación mesiánica que aún es bebé. And if you don't have roots you're, during a storm, you're going to get uh, uprooted. Y si tú no tienes eh, um, raíces durante la tormenta, es, entonces esto significa que vas a ser este, eh, um, arrancado. And what would they be rooted in? ¿Y en qué estarían ellos entonces eh, sembrado o arraigado? Ok. Well, since the New Testament's not written. Bueno, sabiendo que el Nuevo Testamento aún no, no estaba escrito. Then it has to be the Torah. 
Entonces esto tendría que ser la Torah. The reason we were going so uh, so slow in this study. La razón por la cual estamos eh, yendo tan despacio en este estudio. Is this is one of the most misunderstood books in the Brit Hadashah. Es porque este es uno de los libros que más mal ha sido eh, mal más ha sido mal interpretado. And if you have a Facebook war with people. Y si tú tienes una guerra en Facebook con las personas. You know, um, Christians always use this this book to um, to say we're not under the law. Los cristianos muchas veces usan este este libro, esta carta a los Efesios para decir que no estamos más bajo la ley. And you really need to understand this chapter. Y tú de verdad deberías de entender este capítulo. Because as we go into chapter four, porque mientras avanzamos hacia el al capítulo cuatro, you're going to see um, that the congregation in Ephesus is already beginning to fall. Te vas a dar cuenta que la congregación en Éfeso ya había empezado a caer. And this is with most people. Y esto es con la mayoría de las personas. See a lot of people leave um, leave um, the pagan life and get on fire for the Lord for a little while. Veamos que hay muchas personas que empiezan eh, que dejan los el, la vida pagana y entonces se, se están en fuego para Jehová por un, un corto tiempo. But you, you, Yeshua gave us this parable of the four seeds. Pero Yeshua nos dio la palabra de las cuatro semillas. And remember he says the the there's seed on the ground. Recordemos que él dice que hay semillas en la en la tierra. Seed on the rock. Semillas en la piedra, en las rocas. Seed that gets entangled in the world. La semilla que se es, eh, que se eh, es, es, se enreda, se envuelve en las cosas del mundo. And then seed that really falls on good ground. Y la semilla que cae en buen en buena en buena tierra. So 75% of people don't make it. Entonces, un 75% de las personas no logran la meta. And this is the main, the main issue. Y este es el, 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 el problema primordial. Why don't we put that el in, asunto principal. Put that on the side, Connor. Because that's right in front of the camera. Put it on the table. Okay. So, most people don't make it because they're not rooted. La mayoría de las personas no alcanzan porque no están arraigados. And to prove that he is talking about the Torah. Y para comprobar esto, él está hablando sobre la Torah. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Let's read verse 17 and 18, uh, 17 and 18 together now. Vamos a leer el versículo 18 y 19 juntos. 17 y 18 juntos. Yes. So that the Messiah may live in your hearts through your trusting. Also, I pray that you will be rooted and founded in love. So that you with all God's people will be given the strength to grasp the breadth, the length, height, and depth of Messiah's love. Amen? Amen. So what we're focusing on, on the, is the, the breadth, the length, and the height. En lo que nos estamos enfocando ahora sería en el... En el aliento, okay, lo ancho, lo profundo y lo alto. And at first I thought, okay, we're getting the Spanish word. That's cool. Yeah. Um, at first I thought he was talking about the Mishkan. Al principio, eh, Rabbi pensó que le estaba hablando sobre el Mishkan. Yeah, you know, because because the tabernacle, the Mishkan has, you know, length, height, width. Eh, porque ve, ve, veamos que el templo tenía todos estos, eh, de, tenía la, la, lo ancho, tenía lo alto, lo largo. But the law of first reference you have to go to first. Pero hay que ir a la ley de primera referencia. And these, the, the, the Mishkan has length, height, and depth. Pero el Mishkan, el templo, tendrí, tenía altura, anchura y profundidad. But it doesn't have breadth. Pero eh, tenía largura, eh, eh, altura y profundidad, mas no tenía la, la anchura, lo ancho. Breath as a measurement. Estamos hablando la anchura como eh, me, me, medidas. So let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. So let's read verse 18 again. Vamos a leer el versículo 18 una vez so, más. So that you with all God's people will be given strength to grasp the breath, length, 
height and depth of Messiah's love. So the first part we have to look at is why did he use the word grasp? Porque lo primero que debemos de poner la atención es por qué él usó la palabra a, a, agarrar, sostener. So let's take a look at the Greek word, which is very important. Vamos a ver la, la palabra griega que es muy importante. It is G2638. Es la palabra griega G2638. So definition number one, to lay hold of so as to make it your own. Entonces, la definición número uno, el, para, es el sostenerla para que así hacerla parte de ti o tuya. Ok. Sorry, I have a correction. The word breath in Spanish is amplitude. Ok, la palabra, eh, disculpen, eh, estamos... Yeah. yeah. Amplified. Um, eh, la palabra breath eh, significa en, en español amplitud. Ok. So definition number one is to make it your own. Entonces la definición número uno es hacerlo propietario tuyo. Number two is to understand. Número dos es, ente, el ente, eh, es entender. Perceive. Percibir. Learn. Aprender. And comprehend. Y entender o comprender. So he's talking to this baby congregation. Entonces a la, hablando a, a esta congregación bebé. About That they have to draw strength from something. Ellos tendrían que, que buscar las fuerzas de algo. About, and it, it's finally going to end up in Messiah's love. Y esto es, y finalmente llega al, fin, al amor del Mesías. So you're going to have to make it your own. Entonces tú vas a tener que hacerlo tuyo. You're going to have to comprehend what Messiah did. Tú vas a tener que comprender o entender lo que hizo el Mesías. Perceive what he did. Percibir lo que él hizo. Learn why he did it. Aprender por qué él lo hizo. And this is why a moment ago we were talking about the four seeds. Hace un momento atrás estuvimos hablando de las cuatro semillas. Because unless you comprehend the four seeds. Porque eh, al menos que eh, entiendas las, las, las cuatro semillas. As the world is beginning to really spiral out of control. Porque mientras que eh, viendo que el mundo se está saliendo fuera de control. As YouTube is purging anything that has anything to deal with the Bible. Viendo que YouTube, eh, esta página de medio de comunicaciones está... Eh, um, ¿Cómo? Está exterminando, exterminando o sacando del aire a todos los que, todos los que hablen o, o algo que tenga que ver con la palabra de Dios. Now I talk about this. ¿Por qué ahora hablo de esto? Because if you're part of the 25%, porque si tú eres parte del 25%, you're going to have to understand that you're going to have to grasp the breadth. Tú vas a tener que agarrar la, la, la amplitud, the length, la, la largura. The height, la altura, the depth, la, la profundidad of what Messiah did for the world. De lo que el Mesías hizo para el mundo. But that's going to be a choice that you are going to have to make. Pero esta es una decisión la cual tú vas a tener que tomar. Now why is this important to understand? Ahora por qué es importante el entender esto? Because he's writing to the congregation at Ephesus. Porque él está escribiendo a la iglesia en Éfeso. And they We're living in a secular society. Y ellos estaban viviendo en una sociedad secular. A secular pagan society. Una sociedad secular pagana. And there were many gods. Y había muchos dioses. Artemis was one of them. Artemisa era uno de ellos. And uh, you know, there's many gods like we have today. Y, hay muy, y había muchos dioses como los tenemos hoy en día. So he's encouraging them Él les está animando a ellos to understand these four things. El que ellos entiendan estas cuatro cosas. That even though the world all around you may be saying something different. Y, y aún así que el mundo alrededor de ti esté diciendo algo diferente. You're going to have to stand against the world. Tú vas a tener que hacerle frente y pararte en contra del, del mundo. Now let's go to the next slide. Ahora vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Verse 18. Versículo 18. So that you, that you, with all of God's people, will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, height, and depth of Messiah's love. 
Okay? So where are these four words found? ¿Dónde se fue, fueron encontradas estas cuatro palabras? That you can get an understanding of why he used those four words. Donde tú podrías encontrar un entendimiento de dónde él usó estas de, 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 de donde él usó estas cuatro palabras. Yes, Benjamin. No. That's what I thought at first. Um, ben is saying it was building of the Mishkan, and the answer is no. Y el hermano Benjamin está diciendo que estas cuatro palabras vendrían del Mishkan, del templo. Hold your place there. Mantengan sus lugares ahí. And turn to Bereshit, Genesis chapter 6, verse 15. Y abran sus Biblias en Génesis, capítulo 6, versículo... 6.15 eh, 6, 10, 6, 15. Génesis capítulo 6 versículo 15 I like pizza, garlic pizza, garlic pizza The first time the word length is used la primera vez donde la palabra largura fue usada is in verse 15. es en el versículo 15. Genesis 6, verse 15. Génesis capítulo 6, versículo 15. Here's how you're to build it. The length of the ark is to be 450 feet. Its width 75 feet. Its height 45 feet. So you got length, width, and height. Aquí podemos ver en Bereshit o Génesis capítulo 6, versículo 15, donde encontramos la palabra anchura, amplitud, largura o altura. No, ampli, no, es, no es amplio. No. No. Length. El ancho, la, lo ancho, lo alto y lo, um, lo profundo. Yeah, length, width, and height. Length. Okay. So, you got length. Lo ancho, lo largo y lo alto. Okay, we got the three. Yes. Okay. So why have that reference? Ahora, ¿por qué tenemos esta referencia? Now hold your place there. Mantengan sus lugares ahí. we're going to go back and forth for a moment. Vamos a ir delante, de, de, de delante hacia atrás por un Let's momento. Let's go back to Ephesians 3, verse 18. Vamos a ir de regreso a Efesios capítulo 3, versículo 18. Yes, Consuelo. You got to speak up a little bit. I got a band underneath me. It says breath in yours? Yeah. Say that again? In the King James. NASB. NASB. It says the breath also. Yeah. Okay. So, sería, se, entonces, no, la hermana nos está diciendo que también sale la palabra eh, amplitud que sería lo ancho. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. So we're in Ephesians 3:18 and we're going to go back and forth for a moment. Estamos en Efesios capítulo 3:18 y vamos a avanzar y a retroceder por un por un momento. So that you with all God's people will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, height and depth of Messiah's love. So your first reference to the word length entonces su palabra, primera referencia para la palabra largura in biblical thought process, esto en un, en un pensamiento de, en un proceso de pensamiento bíblico tiene que hacer la ley de primera referencia Once something is established, una vez que algo está establecido the word is associated with that establishment la, pal Always. la palabra es eh, asociada con esa que ya ha sido establecida. So Noah was standing against the world. Entonces Noé estaba haciéndole frente o parándose en contra del mundo. He was the only one righteous in his generation. En su generación él fue el único que fue justo. So this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt. Y esto comprueba sin ninguna duda that Shaul was teaching the Torah. De que Pablo estaba enseñando la Torah. Because why reference breadth, length, height, and depth unless your students know what it meant? 
¿Por qué entonces se le hablaría de la longitud, de, la, la, de, lo, de lo largo, de lo alto y, y, y lo profundo si, si él no conocía de esto? Because he's talking to a baby congregation. Porque él está hablando a una congregación bebé. Now this is the first of its congregation. Ahora esta es una de las primeras de sus congregaciones. So all this is all new to them. Y ahora todo esto es nuevo para ellos. They've left the world. Ellos dejaron al mundo. Or at least they're trying to leave the world. O al menos están tratando de dejarlo. And he's trying to encourage them. Y él está tratando de, de, de animarlos. So let's go back to hold your place there in Ephesians. Mantengan sus lugares allí en Efesios. Let's go back to Genesis 6, Bereshit 6. Vamos de regresos a, Bere, a Bereshit capítulo 6, versículo 15. Let's verse 15 to 17. Ahora vamos a leer Génesis capítulo 6, versículo 15 al 17. Here's how you're to build it. The length of the ark is to be 450 feet. It's width 75 feet. It's height 45 feet. You're going to make the opening for daylight in the ark 18 inches below the roof. Put a door in, the, in its side and build it with lower, second, and third decks. Then I myself will bring a flood of water over the earth to destroy from heaven every living thing that breathes everything on earth will be destroyed okay so once you understand this reference una vez que entiendas esta referencia that you understand all this about messiah's love de que usted entiende todo esto sobre el amor del mesías that his love is for those who separate themselves. Que su amor es para aquellos que se separan a sí mismo. And these people in Ephesus have at this point still separated themselves. Y la y esta iglesia ahí en en Éfeso, ellos aún no se habían apartado a sí mismo. Noah built this ark for 100 years. En Noé, veamos que Noé construyó esta arca por 100 años. And he had to live in a world that was like ours. Y él tuvo que vivir en un mundo igual al de nosotros hoy en día. You know, being the only one righteous in his generation is a hard job. Y ahora el ser el único que se era justo en ese tiempo es un trabajo bien fuerte. You know, Yeshua being the only one who was righteous enough to pay the sin of the world. Y veamos que Yeshua fue el único justo para, suficientemente justo para así pagar el, el, el pago del pecado del mundo. So now go back to... Ephesians 6, ahora uh, Ephesians 3. Ahora vamos de regreso a Efesios capítulo 3. Verse 18. Versículo 18. Or 17 and 18 actually. Eh, en realidad vamos a hacerlo del 17 al 18. So that the Messiah may live in your hearts through your trusting. I, and also I pray that you will be rooted and founded in love. So that you, with all God's people, will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, High depth of Messiah's love. So now we look at the word strength. Ahora vemos la palabra fuerte, fortaleza. Now that you understand his reference. Ahora que entiendes la, las referencias. He's referencing the ark. Él se está referi refiriendo al arca. And the strength it took Noah to build that ark. Y la fuerza que le tomó a Noé construir esa arca. You know, for a hundred years he's saying it's going to, the Lord's going to flood the earth. Ahora él está diciendo por 100 años estuvo eh, eh, llamando la atención y diciendo de que el, Dios iba a inundar el mundo. Noah had to be telling the people that it was going to rain. Y Noé le, está, le tenía que decir a, a las personas que iba a llover. Now what's so important about that? Ahora qué es importante de eso? It had never rained on the earth before. Eh, veamos que nunca había llovido en la faz de la tierra anteriormente. So for 100 years he's building this ark. Ahora por 100 años él ha estado construyendo esa arca. It feels like us sometimes. Se siente como nosotros a veces. When you're trying to tell somebody that they got to follow the word of God. Cuando le tratas de decir a alguien que ellos tienen que seguir la, la, la palabra de Jehová. You're telling the kids in public school you got to do this or do that. Decirle a los jóvenes en las en las escuelas públicas que tienen que hacer esto o aquello. Oh, that's a stupid old book. I'm not following that stuff, right? Oh, eso es un libro estúpido. Yo no debo de seguir esas cosas, ¿verdad? I guess they were trying to get into the ark once the, the rain began to fall. Yo creo que ellos van a tratar buscar eh, entrar al arca en el en el momento que empiece a llover. 
Now look at verse 18 again. Veamos el versículo 18 una vez más. So that you with all God's people will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, height, and depth of Messiah's love. Okay? With God's people. Con, con, las, con el pueblo de Dios. How many people went into the ark? ¿Cuántas personas entraron al arca? A total of eight uh, out of the entire planet. Un total de ocho personas. <coughs> Eh, how, de, 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 de la totalidad del, del planeta. After the, the year, how many people were alive on the planet? Después de que pasó el año, ¿cuántas personas quedaron vivas? There were only eight people left. De que sabe, sepamos, se, son, eran solo ocho. The rest of the planet perished. El resto del planeta pereció. So you need this understanding as you read Ephesians. Necesitas este entendimiento mientras que estás leyendo a, a la carta a los Efesios. Because as you progress into chapter 4. Porque mientras vas progresando en el capítulo 4. He's going to, you know, say, you got to live a life worthy of Yeshua's blood. Entonces, él dice, tú debes de vivir una vida eh, con dignidad de, eh, pa, eh, de, para la, con dignidad, la palabra, dignidad. worthy. Worthy. La palabra con dignidad, vivir la sangre de Yeshua. So you have to understand the strength that comes from the ark. Tú tienes que entender la fuerza que viene del arca. Because imagine being in that, that floating barge. Porque ahora imagínate estar en esa arca que estaba flotando. As you're hearing people scream outside. Mientras que estás escuchando personas que están gritando afuera. People you know are perishing. Personas que tú conoces están pereciendo, se están muriendo. But you can't open that door. Pero no puedes tú abrir esa puerta. If you open that door, everybody in the, inside the ark is going to die. Porque si abres esa puerta, todo el que está dentro del arca se, se, se moriría. Okay. Now, the ark had length. Ahora vemos que la arca tenía longitud. It was strong. Era fuerte. Because as it rose from the ground. Porque mientras iba ascendiendo de la, de, 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 de la tierra, del, del piso. I'm sure it bumped along the, the ground a little bit. Ran into a few trees maybe. Y yo me imagino que esto también tal vez había chocado con algunos árboles y arrastrado a, a, a algunos de ellos. Ran into a mountain or two. O tal vez se eh, chocó con unas montañas o dos. But you were safe in the ark. Pero tú, eh, tú estuviste a, eh, a salvo, estuviste seguro dentro de esa arca. So you need this to read this letter. Tú necesitas ese entendimiento para leer esta Because, carta. Because the teacher, the professor, is referencing this, this scripture. Porque el maestro, el profesor, él está haciendo una referencia a esta escritura. Why say grasp the breadth, length, height, and depth? Porque él diría sostén la, 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 la anchura, la, la, la plenitud, la largura, la altura. Now let's go to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Now in verse 18, Ahora en el versículo 18, it also uses the, the word length. También usa la palabra longitud. Ok. Now let's go to Bereshit chapter, Genesis chapter 13. Ahora vamos a, a retroceder al libro de Génesis capítulo 13. Genesis 13. Bereshit capítulo 13. Verse 17. Bereshit 13 verse 17. Génesis capítulo 13 versículo 17. 17. Bereshit, capítulo 13, versículo 17. Let's read verse 17 and 18. 17 and 18. Y vamos a leer del versículo 17 al 18. Get up. And walk through the length and the breadth of the land, because I will give it to you. Avram moved his tent and came to live in the oaks of Mamre, which are in he Hebron. There he built an altar to Jehovah. So the next reference of the word length. Ahora la siguiente referencia que encontramos sobre la palabra longitud. Is getting an inheritance. Es recibir una herencia. 
Okay, it's very important understanding. Es muy importante entender. So now you're getting salvation when everybody else is perishing. Ahora tendrás, ahora tienes tu salvación mientras que todo el mundo se está pereciendo. You now get an inheritance by leaving your pagan family behind. Ahora estás recibiendo una herencia por dejar a tu familia pagana atrás. Let me say that again. Déjenme decir esto una vez más. It's a very important understanding. Es un entendimiento muy importante. And you can see that he definitively is teaching the Torah to the people. Y vemos que Pablo está definitivamente enseñándole la Torah al pueblo, a las personas. Let's read verse 17 and 18 in Genesis chapter 13. Vamos a leer versículos 7 y 18 en el en Génesis capítulo 13. Get up and walk through the length and the breadth of the land because I will give it to you. Avram moved his tent and came to live by the Oaks of Mamre which are in Hebron. There he built an altar to Jehovah. Now, was Avram a believer when he was born? ¿Será que Abraham era un creyente cuando él nació? No, his pa parents were tree worshippers. No, sus padres eran adoradores de árboles. So he had to leave the pagan lifestyle. Entonces él tuvo que dejar el modo de vida pagano. To listen to God. Para escuchar a Jehová. To leave his father's house. Para dejar la casa y dejar la casa de su padre. Leave his family behind. Dejar a su familia atrás. And go and follow God's word where God told him to go. Y ir y seguir la palabra de Jehová donde fue donde él le dijo que tenía que ir. Now why is that important to understand? Ahora porque esto es importante. Because leaving everything behind. Porque el dejar todo atrás. And going to do what God asks you to do is going to take strength. Y ir y hacer lo que Jehová te pidió que hicieras, esto va a requerir fuerzas. It's going to take trust. Esto va a tomar eh, conf eh, confianza. It's going to take courage. Esto va a, te a, a tomar este, um, eh, coraje. No, courage. Courage? Oh. So... But that's the word from last, last week. Valentía. Va a tomar valentía. Write that down in your hand this week. Yeah, because that same word last week was uh, making me crazy. Okay. So, now, go back to the Ephesus scripture. Vamos de regreso a la escritura de la carta a los Efesios. Let's look at verse 17 in Ephesus. Ephesians, chapter 3, Ephesians. Chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Ephesians chapter 3, versículo 17 y 18. So that the Messiah may live in your heart, hearts through your trusting. Also, I pray that you will be rooted and founded in love, so that you with all God's people will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, height, and depth of Messiah's love. Okay? So it's a very important understanding. Es muy importante, eso es un entendimiento una, eh, eh, muy importante. Abraham had the Lord in his heart. Abraham tenía a Jehová el Padre en su corazón. He had to trust the word of God to leave his family. Él debió de confiar la palabra de Jehová para así dejar a su familia atrás. So then in the beginning of verse 18, ahora en el, en el, al principio del versículo 18, he's referencing God's people. Él se está refiriendo al pueblo de Jehová. Who are God's people? ¿Quién es el pueblo de Jehová? The children of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Los hijos de Abraham, Yitzhak, y Yaakov. They are the only ones that have been given a promise. A estos fueron los únicos a los cuales se les dio una promesa. No other person on the planet has been given a promise. A ninguna otra persona en la faz de la tierra o en el planeta se le dio una promesa. Let me say that again. Déjeme decir y repetir esto una vez más o decirlo una vez más. No other people on the planet. Ninguna otra persona sobre la faz de la tierra. Have been given a promise. Se le había dado una promesa. You can become part of the promise. Tú puedes pasar a ser parte y tomar a, ser, a tomar puedes pasar a tomar parte de la promesa. By leaving a pagan lifestyle. Por dejar un modo de vida pagano. Like Avram did. Como lo hizo Abraham. No, it's Avram at this point. Not Abraham. Abraham. Okay. But you have to trust. Pero debes de confiar. You have to be rooted in this love for God. Debes estar eh, eh, arraigado en este amor por Jehová. 
Then you'll be given strength. Y luego se te darán fuerzas. Now bring this to the people in Ephesus. Ahora llevemos esto a la, al pueblo eh, de, eh, en Éfeso. Ephesus was a very big city. Éfeso era una ciudad bastante grande. They had a five, was well, a 50,000 person auditorium for Artemis. A Ellos church tenían, for Artemis. Ellos tenían un auditorio de 50 mil personas so, para Artemisa. Now, you're this little messianic congregation. Y ahora aquí está esta pequeña congregación mesiánica. And you got to tell your boss, you got to keep the Sabbath. Y tienes que decirle a tu jefe de que debes de guardar el sábado. And you're going to take off the biblical holy days. Y que tú va, vas a tener que, vas a guardar el día santo bíblico. Imagine what type of strength these people needed. Ahora imagínense qué tipo de fuerzas estas personas necesitaban. And this is the first group that did it. Y este fue el primer grupo que lo hizo. So here, this... Up to this point, he's encouraging them. Hasta este punto, él les estaba eh, 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 animando a ellos. In verse 18, he's saying, you'll be given strength. En el versículo 18, dice, se les dará eh, fuerza, se le otorgará fuerza. You know, Noah had to have great strength. Noé debió tener una, una gran fuerza. You gotta switch the batteries. So, it's something for us to really look at, especially the age that we're living in. Esto es algo especialmente para que nosotros el, lo, lo veamos lo que está sucediendo aquí, especial, y, y viendo en el tiempo que estamos viviendo. One of the things that most people misunderstand about Paul's writings. Una de las cosas que las personas mal, eh, malinterpretan sobre pa, las escrituras de Pablo. That it's directions to baby congregations que esas son eh, direccio, instrucciones a una congregación mes, bebé mesiánica and people misunderstand his writings y las personas malinterpretan sus eh, eh, escrituras because with a baby messianic with a baby messianic congregation una con una bebé una congregación mesiánica bebé You're going to focus on major issues over smaller issues. Tú te vas a enfocar en, en situaciones más gran, eh, mayores que, que situaciones más pequeñas. Okay. And that's what most people don't understand. He's not making new scripture. Y eso es lo que la mayoría de las personas no entiende. Él no está haciendo nuevas escrituras. He's encouraging his baby congregation. Él está animando a su congregación bebé mesiánica. He's not going to be able to call them on the phone. Él no va a poder llamarlos a ellos por teléfono. He's not going to be able to send them an email. Él no va a, a, a poder enviarles un, un correo electrónico. He's not going to be able to text them. Él no va a poder mandarle una, un, una, un mensaje a través de la mensajería de teléfono. He's not even be, going to be able to get there fast. Él no va a poder llegar a ese lugar rápidamente. You know, we have airplanes and we can get across the Atlantic Ocean in seven hours. Tenemos eh, aeronaves que pueden volar a través de, del Atlántico o del mar este, en siete horas. You know, we had to take a ship and hope the wind was going the right way. Y él de, ellos tenían que tomar un barco y, y esperar que el, el viento soplara en, el, en el, la posición correcta. We could check our phone and see what the radar looks like in the whole world. Y nosotros podemos tomar nuestros dispositivos y ver qué tal se ve el radar en, el, en todo el mundo. Remember he gets shipwrecked uh, more than once, right? Recuerden que eh, se, se, hay eh, eh, barcos que son náufragos eh, muchas veces. So here what he's doing Aquí lo que él está haciendo. He's trying to give them a lesson from Noah. Él está tratando de darle una lección de Noé. That he separated himself from a pagan society. Que él se separó de, de una de una sociedad pagana. 
Then he's trying to show them a second reference. Y luego le está tratando de mostrarle una segunda referencia. That you'll get an inheritance if you understand the breadth, length, height and depth of Messiah's love. Que se te dará una herencia si tú entiendes la 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 la, la palabra que eh, plenitud, amplitud, an, eh, alto lo, eh, longitud y eh, profundidad. So you must understand these two references first. Tú, y tú necesitas entender estas dos referencias primero. Because as we progress in the study, porque mientras progresamos en el estudio, that you you see many Christians don't understand these references. De que vemos de que mucho de los, la mayoría de los cristianos no entienden estas referencias. So they misunderstand what he says in the f chapter 4, 5 and 6. Entonces ellos malinterpretan lo que dice en el, en el capítulo 4, 5 y 6. Especially chapter 6. Y especialmente capítulo 6. Where he talks about putting on the full armor of God. Donde él habla eh, el poner, vestirse con la, la armadura completa de Jehová. And you're more like Nacho Libre. You know, he thinks he was a superhero. You know, he thinks he's Th Thanos, and Thanos is not real. Yeah. <laughs> Just say he thinks he's a superhero. Él piensa que él era un, un, un superhéroe. And this is what the problem with the body of Messiah is. Y este es el problema con el cuerpo del Mesías. Because they don't understand this verse 18. Porque ellos no entienden este versículo 18. Strength comes from separation. La, la, la fuerza viene de la separación. Okay. Asher's here. Okay. Strength comes from separation. La fuerza viene por la separación. Then when the, when the world is being destroyed. Y entonces cuando el mundo se ha destruido. You won't be destroyed. Tú no vas a ser destruido. Okay, it's a very important lesson. Es una lección muy importante. Because how many people want to get an inheritance? Porque cuántas personas quieren obtener una herencia? How many people want a room with a view of gold streets? Cuántas personas quieren una habitación con una vista hacia las calles de oro? Huh? And a fence that has seven gemstones in it. Repeat that. A, a, a fence that has 12 gemstones in it. Y una verja que tiene 12 diferentes tipos de piedras preciosas. And a gate that's made of a gigantic pearl. Y una puerta la cual está hecha de una perla gigantesca. Okay. And it's the, where the streets have no name. <laughs> Donde las calles no tienen nombre. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Verse 18 again. Versículo 18 una vez más. So that you will, so that you, with all of God's people, will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, height, and depth of Messiah's love. Okay, one, once again we're focusing on those words again. Una vez más nos estamos enfocando en esas palabras otra vez. The word height. La is, palabra altitud. The law of first reference is once again those two verses that we just looked at. Una vez más, la ley de primera referencia fueron aquellos dos versículos los cuales eh, leímos. It's very important to understand it. Es muy importante entender esto. Because if you don't understand the beginning of how to do the math problems. Porque si en el principio no entiendes cómo hacer la, la, hacer la, la solucionar la matemática. As you get older, you're going to move from addition and subtraction. Mientras que vas a, 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 creciendo, vas, te va, vas a avanzar de, la, de, las, de sumar y restar. To multiplication. A multiplicar. To algebra. A álgebra. Algebra has to be done in a certain method. Y el álgebra debe de ser hecha en un cierto método. Calculus has to be done in a certain method. Cálculo debe también ser, debe de ser hecho en un cierto método. The same goes for the scripture. Lo mismo va para las escrituras. If you don't understand the beginning. Si tú no entiendes el principio. Then you're gonna misunderstand 
the end. Entonces, así mismo, vas a, uh, no vas a poder entender el final. And you know when you're going to find out that you're wrong? Tú sabes cuándo te vas a dar cuenta de que estuviste eh, mal. After you die, equivocado, después que tú you're going to live again. Tú vas a, no vas a volver a, a, a vivir. And you're going to stand in Messiah's court. Y tú te vas a parar enfrente de la corte del Mesías. And Messiah is going to say to your face. Y el Mesías te dirá en tu propia cara. Get the hell out of my house. Apartaos de mí. I don't know you. Yo no te conozco. But but Lord, I went to church every Sunday. Oh, pero mi señor, yo fui a la iglesia todos los domingos. I preached in your name. Yo prediqué en tu nombre. I healed in your name. Yo sané en tu nombre. And Yeshua says, get away from me, you worker of lawlessness, Matthew 7. En Mateo 7, Yeshua dice, apartados de mí, hacedores de maldad. So here in verse 18, aquí en el versículo 18, the law of first reference for height is in both of these verses that we just read. La palabra de primera referencia para esta palabra alto o altitud está en los primeros dos en los los en los dos versículos que leímos anteriormente. Let's go on to next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Okay. Now the word depth. Ahora la palabra profundidad. Let's read verse 18 again. Vamos a leer el versículo 18 una vez más. So that you with all God's people will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, height, and depth of Messiah's love. So you, we looked at breadth. Vimos la palabra amplitud. Length. Longitud. Height. Altitud. And that was in Genesis 6. Y esto fue en Genesis Verse 3, uh, verse 15. Versículo 15. And also in Genesis 13, Bereshit 13, verse 17. Y también lo pudimos ver en Bereshit o Genesis capítulo 13. Okay, uh, verse 17. Y versículo 17. Now it says the depth, and it says end depth. Ahora habla de la palabra profundidad y dice la profundidad y la profundidad. Let's look at a reference for the word depth. Vamos a ver la palabra, una, la, la ley de primera referencia de la palabra de eh, profundidad. Ok, turn to 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 3. Vamos a primera de Reyes. 1 Kings primera chapter de Reyes, 6, verse 3. Primera de Reyes, capítulo 6, versículo 3. 1 Kings 6, 3. Primera de Reyes, capítulo, primer libro de, Re, de, de Reyes. Capítulo 6, versículo 3. Thanks. First Kings 6, 3. Primer libro de Reyes. Capítulo 6, versículo 3. First Kings 6, 3. Primer libro de Reyes, capítulo 6, versículo 3. The porch in front of the nave of the house was 20 cubits in length corresponding to the width of the house and its depth along the front of the house was 10 cubits. It's talking about Solomon's temple. Aquí está hablando sobre el templo de Salomón. So now we got three references. Ahora tenemos tres referencias. We got separation of Noah. Tenemos la separación de Noé. Before the flood. Antes del diluvio. Separation. Yes, Ben? What version were you reading? I was reading uh, the NASB. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, was, it doesn't read the same here either. Yeah, the CJB sometimes misses some words. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, let's read 1 Kings 6, 3. Vamos a leer el primer libro de Reyes, capítulo 6, versículo 3. The porch in front of the nave of the house was 20 cubits in length, corresponding to the width of the house, and its depth along the front of the house was 10 cubits. So we're talking about the building of the first temple. Aquí estamos hablando sobre el, el, la, la estructura del primer, del primer templo. So you got separation in Noach. Tienes la separa tenemos la separación de Noé. Separation of Abraham. La separación de Abraham. Now you got the separation of a holy building. Ahora tenemos la separación de un edificio santo. Okay. So now, the, you, you need this as you progress in the letter. 
Ahora necesitas esto mientras que avanzas en la, eh, en la carta. That you're building something because you're the temple of God. Porque estás haciendo, estás construyendo algo porque recuerda que eres el templo de Jehová. You have to be separated like Noah. Tienes que ser separado como Noé. You, He's telling them you have to leave your pagan family and your pagan life behind. And then the first king's reference. Y en la car, y en la, y en el libro de Reyes, you have to build a new life and a new place to live. Dice que tú tienes que hacer una vida nueva y un nuevo lugar donde vivir. That must be separated. Que debe ser separado. From the pagan lifestyle, del modo de vida pagano, it must be a separated home. Tiene que ser una casa separada. Now go back to Ephesians 6. Ah, ahora vamos a la, la, la carta a los Efesios, capítulo 6. Let's go ver, from verse 16 through 18 now. Ahora vamos al versículo. De, Ephesians 3, verse 16 through 18. Hey, vamos de regreso al capítulo 3 de la carta a los Efesios, versículo 16 al 18. Ephesians 3, hey, carta a los Efesios, capítulo 3, verse 16 al 18. 16 al 18. I pray that from the treasures of his glory, he, the Father, will empower you with inner strength by his spirit, so that the Messiah may live in your hearts. Through trusting, also I pray that you will be rooted and founded in love, so that you will, with all God's people, will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, height, and depth of Messiah's love. Amen. So when you start at verse 16, entonces cuando comenzaste el versículo 16, we prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that he's talking about the Father in verse 16 last week. Comprobamos eh, sin ninguna duda que en el capítulo, en el versículo 16, él está hablando de, sobre el Padre. Because he says he prayed to, them, prayed to the Father for them. Porque él dice, él está bla, bla, a, a, orando al Padre por ellos. So now he, then he, give, that the Father will give them strength. Que el Padre le daría fuerzas. Like the strength of Noah. Como las fuerzas de Noé. To be separated from a pagan world. Para así separarse de un mundo pagano. The strength of Abra Abraham. Las fuerzas de Abraham. To leave his family behind. Y para dejar su familia atrás. As these people in Ephesus have done for themselves. Así como esas personas en Éfeso habían hecho para sí mismo. You know, imagine telling your family that they're worshiping trees and that's pagan. Ahora imagínate decir a tus familias que ellos están adorando un árbol y que eso es pagano. That they got to get rid of all these idols. Que ellos tienen que deshacerse de todos estos ídolos. Okay. So now he's saying, now Messiah in your hearts. Ahora está diciendo el Mesías, que el Mesías está en su corazón. That they're, tr they're trusting the word. Que están confiando en la palabra. You're rooted in the love of God's word. Están arraigados en el amor de la palabra. Now the breadth, the length, the height. Ahora la amplitud, la longitud y lo, y la, y lo alto. He references the book of Genesis. Él, ref, él hizo referencia al libro de Génesis. In two places. En dos lugares. Then he says, now the depth of Messiah's love. Ahora él dice la, 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 la profundidad del amor del Mesías. Okay, and that's a reference to 1 Kings chapter 6. Y esa es la referencia del primer libro de Reyes, capítulo 6. The building of the temple of the holy place set aside. La estructura o el edificio del, del primer templo. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Okay. Verse 18 again. Versículo 18 una so vez that, más. So that you with all God's people will be given strength to grasp the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of Messiah's love. Okay. These four terms Ahora, estos cuatro términos are used by Jehovah in building a holy house. Fueron usados por Jehová eh, eh, al construir una casa santa. And a vessel of salvation. Y un, una vasija de, de salvación. Let me say that again. Déjeme decir esto una vez más. A vessel of salvation. Un, una, un envase, una vasija de, de, de salvación. What's the ark? ¿Qué es el arca? A vessel of salvation. 
es una vessel exterior como una arca así. Car. Como una arca de, sal, de la salvación. Uh, vessels, really. Diga. Nave. Una nave. Yeah, it's a, it's a refer, reference back like a, an ark is reference in the word vessel in Spanish is going back to the same. It's uh, an ark, uh, something like that, a boat, a ship. But everybody understands arca. Yeah. But everybody understands latkes? Arca. 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 Oh. Arca, which is I understand arca. latkes. El arca de Noé, Noah's ark. New work. Okay. <laughs> All right. So these four terms. Entonces estos cuatro términos. This is why we spent a, a, I didn't want to rush it last week. Por eso es que la semana pasada yo no quería apresurar esto. Be because without understanding this. Porque sin entender esto. You don't understand the next chapter. No vas a entender o comprender el próximo capítulo. Because this is where many, I've had so many arguments over the last 20 years. He tenido tantos argumentos durante los últimos 20 años. With people that don't understand the book of Ephesians. Con personas que no entienden el, la carta a los Efesios. Because they don't understand the references that Shaul is making. Porque ellos no entienden las referencias que está haciendo Pablo. And why would he write these four terms? Y por qué él escribiría estos cuatro términos? So the four terms are used in building a holy house. Entonces estos cuatro términos fueron usados en construir una, un, hogar, un lugar santo, una casa santa. And building you a vessel of salvation. Y en construirte a ti un, una, una, una arca de salvación. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Now let's read verse 16 through 19. Vamos a leer ahora del versículo 16 al 19. I pray that from the treasures of his glory... He, the Father, will empower you with inner strength by His Spirit, so that the Messiah may live in your hearts. Through your trusting, also I pray that you will be rooted and founded in love, so that you, with all God's people, will be given strength to grasp the breadth, length, height, and depth of Messiah's love. Yes, to know it, even through it, is beyond all knowing. So that you will be filled with all the fullness of God. Okay? Now, now we're focusing on verse 19. Ahora nos estamos enfocando en el versículo 19. Okay, let's read verse 19 again. Vamos a leer el versículo 19 una vez más. Yes, to know it, even, the, even th though it is beyond all knowing, so that you will be filled with all the fullness of God. Okay? Beyond knowing why Yeshua did this. Eh, con, y conocer más allá del por qué Yeshua hizo es, eh, lo que hizo. But you gotta understand verse 19 Pero necesitas comprender el versículo 19. By understanding the four words that we just took an hour to look at. Por entender las cuatro, las cuatro palabras las cuales estudiamos por una hora. Because you have to understand the depth of Messiah's love. Porque debes de entender la profundidad del amor del Mesías. So when you think you can't go any further. Entonces cuando tú pienses que no puedes avanzar ni, ni un paso más. Or I can't do this. This is too hard. O cuando, cuando digas, oh, yo no puedo hacer esto. Esto es muy duro hacerlo. You know, the Christians always say, the law is too hard to do. Entonces hay cristianos que muchas veces, oh, la ley es tan fuerte hacerla. What if Messiah were to say, It's going to hurt, you know, get my beard pulled out of my face. ¿Qué tal pensar que donde dice Mesías que dolería que su barba fuera jalada? Okay, so he prefaces verse 19. Entonces, él hace una referencia al versículo, parafrasea al versículo 19. With the four words. Con estas cuatro palabras. That without understanding the separation. Sin, sin entender la separación. Because how many people would be willing like Abraham? Porque cuántas personas estarían dispuestos como Abraham? To leave your whole family behind. Dejar toda su familia atrás. How many people would be like 
Noah, the only person in the whole world, eh, como Noé, la única persona en todo el mundo, surrounded by pagans, rodeado de paganos. I mean, for a hundred years, be building this ark. Yo me, yo, yo digo de que por cien años él estuvo construyendo esa arca. Okay, this is beyond knowing. Esto es más allá de, de, del conocimiento. Because most people do not have the perseverance to do this thing. Porque la mayoría de las personas no, personas no tienen la perseverancia para hacer eso. But he encourages them in verse 19. Pero él les anima en el versículo 19. Let's look at verse 19. Vamos a leer el versículo 19. Yes, to know it, even though it is beyond all knowing, so that you'll be filled with all the fullness of God. Now we're going to look at the, the, the last part of the sentence. La última parte de, este, de esta oración. Be filled with the fullness of God. Eh, se llena, llenado con la, con la plenitud de Jehová. Se well, lleno con la plenitud de Jehová. What would be the fullness of God? ¿Qué sería la plenitud de Jehová? That we just spent an hour on. Acabamos de, de, de estudiar por una hora. When everybody else is dying. Mientras que todos están muriendo. You're going to have a vessel of salvation. Tú vas a tener una arca de salvación. When everybody else doesn't have an inheritance, you get an inheritance. Cuando nadie más tenga una, una herencia, tú vas a obtener una, una herencia. So this is what he's trying to tell them. Entonces esto es lo que él está tratando de decirle a ellos. Because once you get to chapter 4, porque una vez que llegues al capítulo 4, that's when he starts to get a little aggravated with the congregation. Ahí es donde él se empieza a molestar un poco con la congregación. Because they don't understand this. Porque ellos no entienden. Okay? Being filled with all the fullness of God, ser lleno con la plenitud de Jehová, is also the blessings and protection of God. Esto también son las bendiciones y la protección de Jehová. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Let's go on to section number 7 of chapter 3. Vamos a la, a la sección número 7 del, del capítulo 3. We're going to read verse 20 and 21. Vamos a leer versículo 20 y 21. Now to him who by his power working in us is able to do far beyond anything we can ask or imagine. To him be the glory in the Messianic community and the Messiah Yeshua from generation to generation forever. Amen? Amen. Now the synopsis of this last section of chapter 3. Ahora el resumen de, este, de esta última sección del capítulo 3. We have to comprehend the painful sacrifice of Yeshua. Debemos de entender el sacrificio doloroso de Yeshua. This wasn't easy for him. Esto no fue fácil para él. He was, he's a king. Él era un rey, él es un rey. And he had to leave his throne to live like a peasant. Él, tiene, él tuvo que dejar su trono para vivir como cualquier persona. But he had victory over, the, over death. Pero él obtuvo la victoria por, por encima de la muerte. But it was a painful sacrifice. Pero esto fue un sacrificio muy doloroso. Now we should be able to go way beyond ourselves knowing what Yeshua did. Ahora nosotros deberíamos ir más allá de nosotros mismos y sabiendo lo que Yeshua hizo. If we're going to live for Elohim. Si vamos a vivir para Elohim. So here he's telling them Yeshua is working in you. Aquí él está diciéndole a ellos Yeshua está trabajando en ustedes. And this is far beyond anything we can imagine. Y esto va más allá de cualquier cosa que podamos imaginarnos. In our synopsis here, in the synopsis slide. Aquí en este en esta diapositiva del resumen. We should be steadfast in our walk. Deberíamos estar firmes en nuestro caminar. And not become like the pagans that surround us. Y no pasar a ser como los paganos que nos rodean. It's hard. I mean, imagine living in Ephesus. Es fuerte. Ahora imagínese vivir en Éfeso. Oh, we are. Oh, estamos viviendo en Éfeso. The world is Ephesus. El, el mundo es Éfeso. Okay. So he's encouraging them. Entonces, él está animando a ellos. You left the pagan lifestyle. Ustedes dejaron ese modo de vida pagano. You've been blessed. Eh, han sido bendecido. Now, don't become like the pagans surrounding you anymore. Ahora no vuelvan a ser como los paganos que les están rodeando. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Let's focus on verse 20. Vamos a enfocarnos en el versículo 20. Now to him who by his 
power working in us is able to do far beyond anything we can ask or imagine. Okay? Now, verse 20 can only be understand, understood by understanding verse 18. Ahora el versículo 20 solo podría ser entendido por haber entendido el versículo 18. Because you need to understand the height, the depth, the width, and the breadth. Porque necesitas entender la plenitud, la longitud y la altitud y la, y la profundidad. Then you can do far beyond anything we can ask or imagine. Entonces ir más allá de cualquier cosa que podamos imaginarnos. Because it's going to be a hard, hard race. Porque esto va a ser una carrera muy dura. Okay. Remember. Recuerden. 75% of the world fails to finish the race. Un 75% del mundo no logra terminar la carrera. Let me say that again. Déjeme decir esto una vez más. 75% of the world fails to finish the race. Un 75% del mundo no logra terminar la carrera. And even this congregation that we're reading about in Ephesus. Y, y aún así esta congregación que, de la cual estamos leyendo aquí en Éfeso. They fail. Ellos eh, eh, fallaron, cayeron. In Revelation 2. En, en Apocalipsis capítulo 2. Yeshua himself says that you have fallen. Yeshua mismo con sus propias palabras dice... dice que ellos habían caído. But at this point in chapter 3, pero ahora en este punto aquí en el capítulo 3, they have not yet fallen. Ellos aún no habían caído. He's telling them you have the power working in you. Él les está diciendo a ellos ustedes tienen el poder que está trabajando en ustedes. It's far beyond anything you can imagine. Esto va más allá de cualquier cosa que ustedes se puedan imaginar. Pero hay muchas personas que van y dicen, oh, yo no puedo hacerlo, no puedo hacerlo. You know, at work or at school, you know, people just fall flat on their face. Eh, como en la escuela o en el trabajo, hay personas que se caen eh, de, de frente, se van de boca. You know, I can't do all Saturday, I can't do all Shabbat. Oh, hay, hay personas que dicen, oh, yo no puedo hacer el, el sábado completo. I have to take my phone up and go to Facebook, it's calling me. Yo debo de tomar mi, 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 mi dispos, dispositivo móvil y, decir, y, des, y ver qué es lo que está sucediendo en Facebook. One of my pagan family tries to call me and I don't answer. ¿Qué si mi familia pagana trata de llamarme y yo no les contesto? What do you think these, what do you think these people are going through? ¿Qué piensan ustedes que estas personas estaban atravesando? I mean, we're blessed, we have the Bible. Nosotros somos bendecidos, tenemos la Biblia. And we've had everybody that has gone before us. Y hemos tenido las personas que... De, that have gone before us. Que, y, y hemos tenido las personas que se han ido antes que nosotros. These were the first. Estos fueron los primeros. So he's, in, he's encouraging them. Él les está animando a ellos. You got Yeshua's power working in you. Ustedes tienen el poder de Yeshua que está trabajando en ustedes. You can, you can do far beyond anything you can imagine. He's encouraging them. Él les está animando a ellos que ellos pueden hacer mucho más allá de lo que ellos se pueden imaginar. But I gotta work Saturday. Oh, pero yo tengo que trabajar el sábado. You think God will provide for you? ¿Tú piensas que Jehová el Padre no va a proveer para ti? He's not going to provide for you, listen. You, sh you shook your head no. Will God provide? ¿Será que Dios o Jehová va a proveer para usted? But what if your boss says you have to work Saturday? Pero qué tal si tu jefe dice que tienes que trabajar el sábado? What if the kids make fun of you in school? What grade are you going into? Freshman in high school. Ooh, is this your first year in the high school with the big kids? I want you to remember this study next week. Yo quiero que recuerdes este estudio la próxima semana. Because it's going to be a whole new ball game Tuesday of next week. Porque el, el martes de la próxima semana va a ser algo completamente nuevo. Because you're going to be there with all the high schoolers. Porque ahí vas a estar con todos los que están en high 
en la escuela secundaria. In second, secondary school. Secondary school. And it's going to be pressure. Y va a haber presión. To be like them. Para que seas como ellos. Now do you have to wear uniforms? Ahora tendrías que usar uniformes. Oh. So now you're going to have to dress like them. Ahora tendrías que vestirte como ellos también. You're going to have to act like them. También tendrías que actuar como ellos. And some young man's going to say, Oh, Lisa looking fine. Y va a haber un joven, un chico joven que te va a decir, Oh, te ves muy bonita. Tell him you got a crazy uncle up north that, that's full of weapons and he'll come down there and blow things up. No, then you'll get the FBI on you. <laughs> so, red flag. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna be challenged. Vas a ser, eh, um, vas a ser retada. Like you've never been challenged before. Como nunca antes habías sido retada. And it's very hard. Y esto va a ser muy fuerte. Seventy-five percent of people. Fail. Un 75% de las personas fallan o caen. Especially what they're going to be teaching you in school. Y especialmente lo que te van a, van a estar enseñando en, en la escuela. What if you have a boy dressing like a girl? ¿Qué tal si ves a un chico que se viste como una chica? And he wants you to call him a girl. Y él quiere que tú le llames por un nombre femenino. What are you going to do? ¿Qué vas a hacer? What are you going to do? ¿Qué vas a hacer? It's going to be a challenge. Va a ser un reto. Un desafío. What, do you see, what if you see two girls kissing? Ahora, ¿qué tal si ves dos chicas besándose? Or two boys. Like, you know, in today's news... Miley Cyrus has got a new girlfriend. She left her husband for a girl. Como Hannah Montana, esta chica Miley Cyrus. Que, Hannah she, Montana? Did you? That was no. I, did you really go there? That's my sisters. Did you really go there? That was. That's for the kids oh, understand. Okay. All right. Okay. We, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll leave it like that. <laughs> what are you gonna do? ¿Qué vas a hacer como esta chica Miley Cyrus que ahora dejó a su esposo para unirse a su novia? But you got Yeshua's power working in you. Pero tienes el poder de Yeshua que um, está trabajando en ti. Yes, sir. No, just to add a little bit, you know. Um, about Hannah Montana? Not, not about <laughs> Hannah Montana, but uh, about the action. And Rabbi is telling this young lady that, um, you know, I, to me it's, you know, I have a daughter 15 years. And I, I'm, I come in in the train in New York and it was disgusting for me to see pretty much a young girl just like this one here and they were just hugging each other and going at it in public in the middle of the, of the train station right there and in my mind I was about to go and I was like my mom wanted I just wanted to go and pam, smack them and keep walking but what's gonna happen they might like it they might I don't know if they're masochists, though. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know. Toxic masculinity. You know, then uh, you, we go to that point and you try to say something. Then I'm a, what you call, what they call, what they call me, I'm a homophobic or something like that. Or racist. I'm a racist, homophobic. Uh, You're a Trump lover. Uh, yeah. So, you all know. All the above. All of the all above. above. So. It's sad to see that this is specifically the world that we live in, just as efficient the, the efficiencies we're living and Noah was living. Like the the last days will be like the days of Noah. Yes. I had one when I was going home. I, after you guys were, after you guys got off. Mm -hmm. the train. Remember we were working overnights in Norway? Yeah. I'm not going to deal with you. 
And they just looked at me like this. And dead silence for the rest of the train ride. That's good. I just looked at him the whole ride. I, went like, I leaned over the chair. And I looked at him like this the whole ride. Go ahead. It's not okay. It's no, not the, even okay. The, the, the key here is what Shaul is telling them in verse 20. La clave aquí es lo que Pablo le está diciendo a ellos aquí en el versículo 20. That you have power. De que ustedes tienen el poder. Far beyond anything that you can imagine. Más allá de cualquier cosa que ustedes se puedan imaginar. Because what, we're, what our society is like is nothing new under the sun. Como es nuestra sociedad hoy en día, esto no es nada nuevo bajo del sol. Colette 1 verse 9 says there's nothing new under the sun. Esclesiastes dice esto, que no hay nada nuevo bajo del sol. Okay, so he's encouraging this, these new believers. Él les está animando a estos nuevos creyentes. These proselytes to messianic, Torah observant messianic Judaism. Estos proselitos eh, observantes de la Torah. That you have the power of Yeshua working inside you. Que ellos tienen el poder de Yeshua trabajando en ellos. And it's far beyond anything you can imagine. Y es más allá de lo que cualquier de cualquier cosa que puedan imaginarse. Once you understand. Una vez que entiendas. The height. La, la altitud o la altura. The depth. La, 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 la amplitud. The width. El, la, 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 the depth es el, la, lo profundo. La anchura. And the breath. It says different. Longitud, altura, profundidad. Okay. And the breath. Y la, la anchura. Amplitud, anchura. Okay. This is <laughs> what he's encouraging these babies to do. Esto es lo que le está animando a estos bebés que, a que hagan. Let's go on the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Any questions on chapter 3? Alguna pregunta aquí en el capítulo 3. One question. Yes, sir. Because Marty, you're awake. You're, you're next. Because uh, okay. well, I guess what it has to do is with the, the speaking about God the Father of Kavavim. Um, everywhere else, it has a capital G, God, capital M, Messiah, capital S for Spirit, but. The words his and he are all in lower case, but they're describing our father. That probably has nothing to do with the study, but it just, I don't know why if they couldn't capitalize that to describe that. I'm not an editor. <laughs> I'm not a book editor. Consuelo is. Consuelo, why? <laughs> Why do they use the, the, the lowercase h to speak of God the Father, he, but yet when it speaks of his title, God, and Elohim, and Messiah, and the Spirit, it's all in capital. Because that's his title, that's his name, so that's the focus. But, but the word he, which is speaking of him. Well, in this sentence, in, in the, the written version, they're, they're low, putting lowercase h. It's just grammatic. Okay, any? Martin, are you okay over there? You awake? Yeah, Rabbi. Yeah, Rabbi. You have any questions hey. or comments? Hey. No, I'm good. Um, that was pretty amazing, though, because um, I was thinking of uh, right after the uh, the, apost the apostolic or you know, the apostles, the Talmudian day pass, you know, the, the, the so-called the fathers of the church, all those guys that took over. I more coffee. And they started persecuting the, uh, the believers. And those first believers, they went to, to, uh, to death. They put them to death. And they died for that faith in Yeshua. 
and in the teachings of the uh, of Russia all and all the apostles. So compare what you were saying compared to today. I mean, sometimes we're playing around too much, you know, because these people here, most of these people, they all die in the Coliseum, Coliseums and uh, killing by the lions, put into death by the Romans, all in, you know, and plus all the anti-Semitism that they raise up and, and even though these people were Gentiles converted to, to Judaism, Messianic Judaism, they died for it. They died for that faith. And, and like you were saying a couple of minutes ago that we are living in the Ephesus. This is the Ephesus, actually. The same thing is happening. The wheels just go around, you know? Pretty interesting. Thank you. I'm going to go back to sleep. Okay. Uh, Wait. Wait. Well, actually, a lot of these people don't, as we're going to read now in chapter 4. Hold on a second. The translator went to go get coffee. All right. We're on the next slide. It's Ephesians chapter 4. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva eh, en el, del capítulo 4. Go on to the next slide. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians capítulo 4. So let's read Ephesians chapter 4 in totality. Vamos a leer el capítulo 4 en su totalidad. Ephesians chapter 4. Carta a los Efesios capítulo 4. Puede sintonizarnos todos los lunes en su radio mesiánica. Ephesians chapter 4. Senderosantiguos.org Ok. Ephesians 4. Therefore, I, the prisoner united with the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Always be humble, gentle, and patient, bearing with them one another in love and making every effort to preserve the unity the Spirit gives through the building power of Shalom. There is one body and one Spirit. Just when you were called, you were called to one hope. And there is one Lord, one trust, one immersion, and one God, the Father of all, who rules over all, works through all, and is in all. Each, of us, each one of us, however, has been given grace to be measured by the Messiah's bounty. This is why it says, after he went up into the heights, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to mankind. Now this phrase, he went up, what can it mean if not that he first went down into the lower part, parts, that is, the earth? The one who went down is himself, the one who went up far above all of heaven in order to fill all things. Furthermore, he gave some people as emissaries, some as prophets, some as proclaimers of the good news, and some as shepherds and teachers. Their task is to equip God's people for the work of service that builds a body, a Messiah. Until we all arrive at the unity implied by trusting and knowing the Son of God, at full manhood, at the standard of maturity set by the Messiah's perfection. We will then no longer be infants tossed about by the waves and blown along by every wind of teaching at the mercy of people clever in devising ways to deceive. Instead, speaking truth in love, we will in every, every respect grow up into him who is the head, the Messiah. Under his control, the whole body is being fitted and held together by the support of every joint, which each part working to fill its function. This is how the body grows and builds itself up in love. Therefore, I say this, indeed, in union with the Lord, I insist on it, do not live any longer 
as the pagans live with their sterile ways of thinking. I'm going to come over there and give you a pachi. Their intelligence has been shrouded in darkness and they're estranged from the life of God because of the ignorance in them, which in turn comes from resisting God's will. They have lost all feeling, so they have abandoned themselves to sensuality, practicing any kind of impurity, and always greedy for more. But this is not the lesson you've learned from the Messiah. If you really listen to him and were instructed about him, then you learn that since what is in Yeshua is truth, then, so far as your former way of life is concerned, you must strip off your old nature because the, your old nature is thoroughly rotted by its deceptive desires and you must let your spirits and minds keep being renewed and clothe yourself with the new nature created to be godly, which expresses itself in the righteousness and holiness that flows that flow from the truth. Therefore, stripping off all falsehood, let everyone speak truth with, with his neighbor because we're intimately related to each other as parts of a body. Be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down before you have dealt with what causes the cause of your anger. Otherwise, you leave room for the adversary. The thief must stop stealing and said he should make an honest living by his own efforts. This way he will be able to share with those in need. Let no harmful language come from your mouth. Only good words that are helpful in meeting <coughs> the need. Words that will benefit those who hear them. Don't cause grief to God's Ruach, HaKodesh. For he has stamped you as his property until the day of final redemption. Excuse me a second. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, violent assertiveness, and slander, along with all spitefulness. Instead, <clears throat> be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgive each other, just as in the Messiah, God also for, has forgiven you. Amen? So it's a pretty powerful chapter. Esto es un capítulo bien poderoso. Okay, it's going to take us a while to get through this chapter. Esto es no, esto, este capítulo nos va a tomar tiempo estudiarlo. Because now it's be, it, you needed to understand all that stuff we did for the last 15 weeks. Ahora de, 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 de necesitabas entender todo lo que estudiamos la, por las últimas 15 semanas. If you're going to understand this chapter 4, si tú vas a entender este capítulo 4, you need to understand the height, depth, width, and breadth of God's love. Necesitas entender la plenitud, la anchura, la altitud, la, la profundidad y lo alto de Jehová. You need to understand... Noah. Necesitas entender a Noé. Leaving, you know, not, not falling into the world's traps. No cayendo en las trampas del, del mundo. You need to understand Abraham. Necesitas, or Abraham. Necesitas entender a Abraham. Being called by God. Ese que fue llamado por Dios. To lead a different type of life. Para vivir un modo, un, un modo de vida diferente. You need to under, understand being surrounded by evil but not being part of the evil. Tú necesitas entender ser rodeado por la, mal, por el, la maldad mas no ser como ellas. Going on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Ephesians chapter 4. The synopsis of this chapter. El resumen de este capítulo. The, ch the chapter began with an admonishment. El, el capítulo comenzó con un admonishment. Encouragement. Con un, con una no, an admonishment, like don't do that. Con, con una exhortación. Okay. Shaul writes about how important to the kingdom. Pablo escribe que cuán importante es para el reino. And the world it is to live a life worthy 
of this calling. Y para el, que es importante es para el reino y para el mundo e import, e, el vivir una vida em, de manera de, de llamado. This is what most people don't gather. Eso es lo, donde, lo que la mayoría de las personas no entienden. We have a great calling. Tenemos un gran llamado. If you're wearing the tzitzi, si estás usa, si, está, si te estás poniendo los tzitzis, even if you're just wearing a cross around your neck, y aún así si solo estás usando una una cadena que tenga una cruz en tu cuello, as many Christians do, como hacen muchos cristianos, you got to understand how important to the kingdom is your walk. Tú tienes que entender qué cuán importante es para el reino tu caminar. And you have to live a life worthy of that cross. Y tú tienes que vivir una vida eh, worthy, um, digna, digna de esa de esa cruz. You got to live a life worthy of the tzitzio that you're wearing. Tú tienes que vivir una vida digna de de, de acuerdo a los tzitzi que te so, estás poniendo. So we need to live a life. How our lives are important to the world. Nos, nuestras vidas son importantes para el mundo. To live a life worthy of a call of this calling. De vivir una vida eh, digna de este mundo, de este llamado. This to this day is still one of the. Hasta este día. Uh, you're reading from? Yes, I'm reading what I wrote. Okay. Bring me there. Okay. Hasta el día de hoy. Esto hasta el día de hoy. Uh, This is one of the biggest problems of the body Messiah today. Este es uno de los unos problemas más grande que tiene el cuerpo del Mesías. Because most of the body Messiah has not left their old lives behind. Porque la mayoría del cuerpo del Mesías aún no ha dejado su vida antigua. Okay, they they say they believe in Messiah. Ellos dicen que creen en el Mesías. But they don't change their lives. Mas ellos no cambian su vida. Okay. Sadly, this was the case at, uh, with the congregation at Ephesus. Eh, tristemente, esto fue lo, lo, la situación de la congregación en Efesi, en Be Éfeso. Because they do fail. Porque ellos caen. In Revelation chapter 2, they fell. En Apocalipsis capítulo 2, dice que ellos cayeron y fallaron. Now the key reasons for this, ahora las razones claves para esto, for this failure is found in section 7 of chapter 4. La razón clave para esta caída es la encontramos en la sección número 7 del capítulo 4. In section 7 is verse 17 through 20. Y en la sección 7 está el versículo, de, de, es del versículo 17 al 20. Where it says, do not live any longer as the pagans live. Donde dice, ya no vivas más como, el mundo, como, la, como, como viven los paganos. You should highlight verse 17 to 20 as the key verses in this chapter. Deberían subrayar el versículo 17 al 20 y, pa, y, y, de acuerdo a esto lo que vamos a estudiar. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. I'm going to give you the chapter breakdown. Les voy a dar la, el, el, la separación del capítulo. Chapter 4 is broken down into 10 sections. El capítulo 4 ha sido separado en 4, en, en 10 sesiones. It's very important to understand how the chapter is broken down. Es muy importante entender cómo es separado el capítulo. Section number 1 is verse 1, 2, and 3. Sección número 1 es el versículo del 1, 2 y 3. Lead a life worthy of the calling. Eh, sigue una vida digna de acuerdo al llamado. That's what starts this chapter out. Verses 1, 2, and 3 is section number 1. El versículo 1, 2 y 3 es la sección número 1. Lead a life worthy of the calling. Sigue una vida digna del llamado. Section number 2. Sección número 2. Is verse 4. Through six. Es, de, es del versículo 4 al 6. And it is entitled, There is one body. Y, y es titulado, Solo hay un cuerpo. This is verse 4 through 6. Eh, este es el versículo 4 al 6. There is one body. Solo hay un cuerpo. Section number 3. Section number 3. It's verse 7 through 10. Es el versículo 7 al 10. Now this phrase, he went up. Ahora, esta frase que, que, que dice que él subió, que ascendió. Is, these, 
verse 7 through 10. Del versículo 7 al 10. If you have any Jehovah Witnesses friends. Si tiene algunos amigos testigos de Jehová. It's very important to memorize these three verses. Es muy importante <coughs> memorizarse estos tres versículos. Because it talks about hell. Porque habla del infierno. And the Jehovah Witnesses don't believe in hell. Y los eh, testigos de Jehová no creen en el infierno. So put in the, your Bible, good witnessing for J, JWs. Eh, pueden eh, su, eh, su, eh, subrayar en sus, o escribir en sus Biblias que estos son versículos o anotar de que esto es un versi, son versículos um, claves para evangelizar a, a, a testigos de Jehová. Section number four. Es, eh, sección número 4 es verse 11 through 13 es del versículo 11 al 13 there this task is to equip God's people for this work of service su trabajo es equipar la, el, el, el pueblo de Dios para el servicio ok and there's a whole study on the this on the website already on these Let uh, me re I'm going to read now from uh, section number four again. I missed one letter. Eh, su, su trabajo es equipar al pueblo de Dios para el, para el servicio del trabajo. Section number five. Section number five. It's only verse 14. Es solo el versículo 14. We will then no longer be infants tossed about by... Eh, el, la sección número 4 es titulada y, en, y luego no seremos ya más no seremos in, infantes eh, la, eh, lanzados de un lado a otro por ok going on everybody got it everybody or we need to leave, leave the slide up eh, ya lo anotaron o necesitan que dije la diapositiva en los monitores everybody got it todos lo tienen Going on to next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Section number six is verse 15 and 16. Sección número 6 es el versículo 15 y 16. Speaking the truth in love. Hablar la, palabra, la verdad en amor. Speaking the truth in love, verse 15 and 16. Versículo 15 y 16, hablar la palabra, eh, la, hablar la verdad en amor. Section number seven. Sección número 7. Is our key section is verse 17 through 20. Es nuestra sección clave de versículo 17 al 20. Do not live any longer as the pagans live. Ya no vivas más como viven los paganos. This is your key to the letter. Este es tu clave a la carta. Because he's telling you right there. Porque él te está diciendo ahí mismo. Stop living like pagans. Deja de vivir como los paganos. So this proves right there that he's teaching Torah. Esto comprueba aquí de que él estaba enseñando la Torah. Because if the law was done, oh, done away with, why would he say you're living like a pagan? Porque si ya la ley ya se había terminado, entonces ¿por qué él estaría hablando o diciendo que dejen de vivir como paganos? Section number 8 is verse 21 to 24. Sección número 8 es del versículo 21 al 24. What is in Yeshua is truth. Lo que hay en Yeshua es la verdad. What is in Yeshua is truth. Lo que hay en Yeshua es verdad. Section number nine. La sección número nueve. Is 25 to 27. Es del, el del versículo 25 al 27. Therefore, stripping off falsehood. Por lo tanto, eh, eh, des, stripping off lies. We'll Taking off. Stripping? Yeah, quitarse. Eh, quitarse. That's the word, stripping. Eh, por lo tanto, quitarse la falsedad. And Deshacerse de la falsedad también. And finally, section number 10. Y finalmente, la sección número 10. Is verse 28 to 32. Es del versículo 28 al 32. For he has stamped you as his property. Porque él te ha estampado como su propiedad. Te ha sellado como su propiedad. So he wants to see if you're kosher. Él quiere ver si tú eres eh, eh, puro. So you got to see if you're going to get a K or a U on your... O U. O -U. Ok. Going on to the next slide. Everybody got this? Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Todos tienen esto. Ok. 
Last uh, slide for tonight. El la ul Section 7. Okay. Yeah, we're verse 7, where it speaks about him going into, into, the, into the death, so uh, he went down. That speaks of, of hell, and that's for the uh, Jehovah's Witness. Section number 3, verses 7 through 10, that's the great witness for the Jehovah Witnesses that don't believe in Section, sección número 3 del versículo 7 al 10, este es una, esos son buenos versículos para testificarle a un, un, a un testigo de Jehová. Because he says he, go, he went into the earth. Porque ahí dice que fue a, a, dentro de la tierra. So, en lo más profundo de la tierra. The Jehovah Witnesses don't believe in hell, so why did they go into the earth? Entonces, si los testigos de Jehová no creen en el infierno, ¿por qué él fue al, al medio del, del, del mundo, del, oh, de la tierra? That's section three, so we'll probably get to it in about three weeks. <laughs> bueno, esa sesión número tres probablemente la vamos a, a, a estudiar en, eh, en las próximas tres semanas. Going on to the next slide where it says the key verses. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva donde nos habla de los versos claves. This is... Uh, Ephesians 4, verse 17 through 20. Y esto es, es eh, eh, Carta a los Efesios, capítulo 4, versículo 17 al 20. Therefore I say this, indeed in union with the Lord, I insist on it. Do not live any longer as the pagans live, with their sterile ways of thinking. Their intelligence has been shrouded in darkness, and their And they are estranged from the life of God because of their ignorance in them, which in turn comes from resisting God's will. They have lost all feeling, so they have abandoned themselves to sensuality, practicing Hannah Montana, any kind of impurity, and always greedy for more. But this is not the lesson you learned from the Messiah. Amen? Amen. Now, was this written 2,000 years ago or was it written today? Ahora, ¿fue esto escrito hace dos mil años atrás o hoy en día? Is this something in the New York Times or the New York Post or is this in the Bible? ¿Será que esto se encuentra en los periódicos o en los encabezados de los periódicos de Nueva York o en la Biblia? Because look at verse 19. Porque veamos, leamos el versículo 19. They lost all feelings so they are abandoned themselves to sensuality, practicing any kind of impurity and always greedy for more. Is that our country today or what? No será que esta es nuestra, nuestra esta nación eh, eh, o, o qué. Everything's about how you feel. Todo se trata de cómo tú te sientes. It's all about sensuality. Todo se trata de la sensualidad. And you're going to find that out next Tuesday. Y eso lo vas a saber la próxima semana. You walk Marcos. into that high school, it's going to be all about what he just wrote there 2,000 years ago. En el momento que entre a ese, a ese colegio, la próxima semana, el martes, te vas a dar cuenta que solo, todo eso se trata de lo mismo que Pablo está hablando aquí en el capítulo 4. Well, I'm sure you already, in junior high school, you already experienced it anyway. Eh, yo estoy casi seguro que en, en el, la escuela secundaria ya anterior ya había eh, experienciado eso. Since they're teaching kids about sex in kindergarten. Ya vemos que les están enseñando a los niños de sexo en, 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 uh, en kinder. ¿En ¿Cómo? A los niños de Jardín Infante le están enseñando sobre el sexo. So, here is the key to understand what's going on is verse 17. La clave para entender lo que está sucediendo aquí es el versículo 17. This is why you know what's going on in Ephesus right here. Aquí es que sabemos lo que está sucediendo, es, lo que está sucediendo es aquí. Verse 17. En el versículo 17. Therefore, I say this indeed in union with the Lord, I insist on it. Do not live any longer as the pagans live with the sterile ways of thinking. Right there, you see he's saying that you're still living like a pagan. Aquí mismo él está diciendo y podemos ver que él hace un reclamo de que de, 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 no insistan en vivir como los paganos. So if we're not under the law anymore, Entonces, si ya no estamos sujetos más bajo la ley, why is he telling them not to live like pagans ¿por anymore? Porque es que le está diciendo a ellos que no vivan más como paganos. I guess we're still under the law. Yo creo que estamos aún entonces bajo la ley. So right next to verse 17, right, we're still under the law. 
Al lado del versículo 17 escriban, aún vivimos en la ley. In your margin in your Bible, right in verse 17, we're still under the law. Escriban en sus Biblias, eh, al lado del versículo 17, aún estamos bajo la ley. How do you tell a pagan from somebody who believes in Who follows Messiah? ¿Cómo te, cómo te das cuenta, eh, 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 cómo ves, cómo te das cuenta eh, eh, en la diferencia de un pagano y uno que sigue al Mesías? So when you're arguing with a Christian to say that we don't, they say we don't need to keep the law anymore. Cuando estás argumentando con un cristiano, ellos dicen que ya no debemos de seguir las leyes. Because Paul says it doesn't matter what day you worship. Porque Pablo dice que ya no importa en qué día tú adores. Well, then why is he saying to them, don't live like pagans anymore? Entonces, ¿por qué aquí les está diciendo a ellos, ya no vivan como paganos? Very interesting letter. This is why it took so much time leading up to this point. Por eso es que tomó tanto tiempo el llegar a este, hasta este punto. Because you need to understand the height, the width, the depth, and the breadth of Messiah's love. Porque necesitas entender la altitud, la plenitud, la altitud, y la, la, um, la longitud y la profundidad del Mesías. Any questions or comments before we close? ¿Alguna pregunta o comentario antes de que cerremos? Everybody enjoying the study? All right. Let's just close in some prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing today. Thank you, Lord, for these words um, from Shaul. May we stop living lives as pagans so that we understand the height with the depth of your love and the breadth of your love, Messiah, Yeshua, and what you did for us. Your name, and everybody said amen. Amen. Shalom, Havarim. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-E. I am org and click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. 
If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the new week's parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, Many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.